Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to talk about Fender's Vintera series. What does Vintera mean? It's a mashup word between vintage and era. It's basically a series of 21 guitars that pay tribute to the vintage eras of Fender. So we're talking the 50s, 60s, and 70s specs in both classic as well as modified formats. This lineup was released in late June. You can check out this video right here where I go in depth about every single one of them, but these essentially just replace the Made in Mexico Classic series. So all of these are also made in Mexico and they're kind of interesting, some of them anyways. So this one is called the Ventera 60s Jaguar Modified HH. So how does this differ from a regular Jaguar? Well, you've got humbuckers in it, and that's kind of what made me go, huh, I really want to try this guitar. Other things include updated electronic scheme. So this isn't doing the regular stuff here. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. It's got the modern C neck profile to it and an adjust-o-matic bridge right here. These things are retailing at $1,149.99, which honestly, it seems really expensive on paper for what you're getting. And it is one of the more expensive ones offered from the Ventera series, but you do get to choose between two similar finishes. They're Surf Green and Sonic Blue. And just in case you're not a fan of this modified humbucker Jaguar, there is a regular one that has the single coil pickups. It's got the vintage style fretboard radius, seven and a quarter. It has the traditional lead and rhythm circuit, mid 60s C neck, and the vintage style Jag bridge. In the previous Fender Classic series, they had a player Jaguar Special HH, which had pretty much the exact same specs here, except for they swapped out the pickups and they gave them more fruity colors this time. So if you'd prefer a white or a tobacco sunburst, definitely go for that older series. So that's a quick lowdown on this. We'll get more in depth details on this on the workbench, but what are my first impressions of this? Keep in mind, this is the very first Jaguar I have ever held in my hands. So I'm not really familiar with what all this stuff does and I'm gonna write that down as my first impression is, oh my goodness, this was so confusing. I sat down with it to try to figure out what was going on because I knew there was a kill switch on here and I knew they were on and off for the pickups. So I was playing around with this and I thought, oh, okay, so this is the kill switch. No, no. <laughs> so essentially you can have multiple kill switches on this guitar because these are the on and off positions for the pickups. And confusingly enough, for me anyways, when they're flipped towards you, so right the way it is right now when they're all facing to the left, that means it's on. So in this position, it would be neck pickup on and bridge pickup on. Right now, it would just be the bridge pickup on. This way, it would just be the neck pickup on. So if you don't remember anything else, these first two are just to turn your pickups on and off. This guy right here is a tone cut. I'm not going to say I know exactly what that's doing. It just kind of makes it sound beefier, like the tone was rolled off a little bit. And you activate that by moving it once again to the left. And then up here, this guitar is super versatile because this little switch right here switches the pickups in between a full on humbucker mode and a single coil mode. So all the way down is single all the way up is humbucker mode. It's kind of impossible for you guys to tell. You just kind of got to play around with it and feel where you are. Then this guy right here is just a kill switch all the time. So if you don't want your guitar on, you're talking to your audience or something, you flip that one down. So straight down for this one is on, whereas this is off. So you have to think opposite with that. It's not on your kill switch is on, it's on your guitar's on. Whew, that took a while to explain. But the next thing is a cosmetic thing. Not all of these are gonna have this. I think I got lucky with this one. It has bird's eye maple on the headstock. And I think that's such a beautiful feature here. And the unboxing, that was the first thing that caught my eye. So I flipped it around hoping this would just be a crazily flamed bird's eye neck, which you can find occasionally. Eh, it's a little bit plain, but you do have a little bit of bird's eye right here as well. So that was a nice surprise that I was not expecting on this instrument but let's talk about how it felt to play this thing. At first, I noticed the strings were very tight. This is a shorter scale length than I'm used to, so I believe that means the strings will feel a little bit loose. 
It also didn't help that I had the strings tuned up a step and a half too high accidentally. So once I've returned that to normal, then it was like, okay, it's a little bit more familiar. Rest relies on this bridge. The tremolo was really creaky at first. But after I kind of worked it in a little bit more, you don't quite get as much noise from it. And I broke my top E string while using the tremolo. And I was only doing it very lightly. I blame it mainly on the extra pressure on the string. So I'll have to replace that. But I decided to do the playing demo today without the top E string because it made me go, huh, what can I play without that top string? I had a lot of fun with that. I don't know if it came through in the recordings or not, but I had fun just sitting around and noodling. But my one last final impression, just of a Jaguar in general, is whenever you strum a note acoustically, you hear the sympathetic vibration actually makes these ring out no matter what. Now, luckily that doesn't amplify, it's a non-issue, but it's just something I noticed. It's kind of loud while you're playing it acoustically. To learn more about this one though, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take a look at its individual specs and parts. Inside the Ventera Jag. These things have always confused me, but now that I've seen the inside, it's like, oh, the world makes sense now. <laughs> let's take a look at these pickups first. Fender is calling these the Atomic Humbuckers. Isn't that a cool name? But the back side of them, they just have Fender's branding on them, as well as black marker. It looks like the neck pickup reads 630K and the bridge pickup reads 631K. Maybe that has something to do with the pickup readings. But other than that, these are kind of looking similar to the other Fender humbuckers I've seen. They always have four conductors coming out like this. And I'm sure this is a real nightmare to figure out how the wiring goes. But these then move on into here. And this is what makes sense to me, because I've always seen these things like this, and it's like... What are these things? I get that they're just little scroller things, but look, they're just little mini pots that are mounted sideways. Doesn't the world make sense now? <laughs> That's kind of actually an ingenious thing. So these are kind of just like giant little knobs. And this guy right here is your kill switch. One little boo-boo I do see under here is it looks like the finish is cracked just when they drilled into the body in general. They probably never actually even saw it because this was covering it. But thankfully, it's covered by everything, so kind of a non-issue, but an issue at the same time. But that's what the inside of that cavity looks like. You've got the shielding paint everywhere. That's where your humbucker sits. Then you move over to these guys, your pickup selector. These are just little slider knobs. Nothing too crazy going on here. And that other one activates your tone cut. And it looks like they just run a different type of capacitor in there or something like that in order to pull that off. You can see those right up there. But there's the continuation of that cavity. And then finally, we get our pots here. Master Volume, Master Tone, CTS pots with an output jack. So if for some crazy reason you wanted to add a third humbucker, you would have to do additional routing. Next thing to note here is the truss rod adjustment is at the base of the neck. And unfortunately, despite them sculpting the pick guard a little bit right there, you can't very easily adjust that without taking it off. But I want to take a minute here and say, Thank you, Fender. Thank you for doing this. The reason why I hate documenting flying Vs and SGs is Gibson does not do this. Whenever you take those guitars apart, you actually have to completely unscrew the knob, so you have to redo your whole action adjustments. But this one, they did this cutout, so you wouldn't have to. So thank you for that. But this is Fender's Adjustomatic Bridge, a ripoff of Gibson's Tunomatic. <laughs> I thought that was funny, but when I unbox this, on a Les Paul, this would be a no-no. This would mean your intonation is most likely not set up correctly, and it's towards the max. Maybe the bridge was even put in the wrong place. But apparently, that's how these Jaguars are supposed to be. Even if you look at the ones on the Fender's websites, that's how they're set up. Even the ones sold by Sweetwater as completely set up have this same adjustment to it. But when I checked my intonation, it was horribly off. Here's what it looks like once I set it all up. So maybe I'm missing something and somebody needs to fill me in, but I think these are just all horribly intonated from the factory. But it fits on there pretty tight and that's nice. The backside reads LPB002. And you can adjust these with a flathead screwdriver. 
But the last mystery in the world for me was the trem system on these. I've never understood these things because I've never got to play with one in person. So here's what the route looks like. It looks like a Kaler route, doesn't it? Just way deeper. But inside the cavity, you do have another barcode right here. But let's figure out how this thing works. So it's mounted by one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Then these are just holding a plate into place back here. You can see where they're poking through right there. And then this one appears to adjust the spring. So you can actually adjust, you know, how wangy this bar can be if you want it to be super tight or a little bit more flexible. So as you press this arm down, it moves the little part that the strings go through. You can see it right here. And the strings just go through there. There's not a fancy Floyd Rose system or anything. This is more so just for a little warble, a little bit of a vibrato system. So it's kind of like a Bigsby, not necessarily Floyd Rose dive bombs. At least that's the gist that I get out of it. And it has Fender's patent number on it right there and their logo. The body itself is made out of alder on this one. And moving on to the neck, it's made of maple with a Pow Ferro fretboard on here. I was scared oiling this fretboard because I had a Gibson that looked like this that was rosewood. And as soon as I oiled it, all this nice streaking went away. I'm still not sure what happened to that Billy Joe signature Les Paul. But this one, even after oiling it, it kept all that beautiful figuring. So whether you like Pow Ferro or not, I think this is a fantastic looking example. And the fret wire on these guys are medium jumbos, and you've got 22 frets. As far as neck specs go, I get 1.64 inches at the nut, which increases to 2.01 at the 12th. First fret neck depth is 0.87. That always surprises me how Fender does that, 0.87 at the 12th too. This is what they call their modern C neck profile shape. It's a pretty thin little neck profile. And we have a 24 inch scale length. The nut is made of synthetic bone and I added a little bit of graphite in there if you're wondering why it's dark. And the headstock has the vintage style tuners that you put the strings down inside, then you wrap them around. So you've got that for all six of those. A single string tree right here and look at all those little bird's eyes. It just kind of looks like deer tracks or a puppy paw prints leading up to the doorstep or something. That's cool. And then Fender Jaguar. Then it says offset contour body. And all that is on a large Fender headstock. The last time I bought an Epiphone with a Pal Ferro fretboard, my hands would turn black while I was playing it. And I had the same experience with this one. But this time, I almost think it was the fret wire because as I was wiping it down, it seemed the blackness actually came from the frets. So I gave this a good cleaning as well to see if we could help with that. Now that I've got it all strung up, it's interesting. It stopped squeaking. Remember how I said when I would press it down, it would squeak? It's now silent. I don't know what I did. Maybe it was just because I added a little bit of graphite within the saddles and the nut. But I thought for sure that was just the spring squeaking. Maybe it's because I tightened it down a little bit. Maybe that was what was the issue. Now it actually feels pretty good to use. Moving on to the backside. Nothing too crazy going on here. You do have a comfort cut right there, but that's about it. It is a bolt-on neck. But check out the wood grain on this maple neck. I think that looks pretty cool on this one too. Pair that with a little bit of bird's eye, nothing too crazy. And I think you just have a very nice example of one of these Ventera 60s modded Jags. You can see the tuners are Clusen in style. They've got those little buttons and your serial number right there, MX19038827, made in Mexico. Now, as I was playing this guitar, I sat it down to go hit record on Logic Pro. That way, you know, I can get the recordings and everything. And I noticed something I missed while unboxing this. I'm not sure if it is a factory defect or if it got damaged in shipping, but it looks like this got hit up against something and there's a big giant indentation. As far as pickup readings go, I mean, there's so much going on within this circuit. I don't think there is a way to really get accurate readings on anything. I can't even get it to show anything. But this example is weighing just about nine pounds, nine pounds, 0 0.2 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in and explain its tones. <laughs> This instrument has a billion tonal opportunities between switching between how much single coil you want, how much humbucker you want, and which pickups you want on, as well as a tone cut when it's activated. I'm gonna do my best to show you everything. That doesn't mean I'm gonna capture everything. I'm not even gonna bother playing with the tone controls because it would just be too much. But let's go ahead and start with just the neck pickup in full humbucking mode.
So that's just strictly the neck pickup. But then remember, you can add the tone cut to that as well. It's just, you know, a slight tone cut, I guess is what you could say. beefier in sound not a lot but it's good enough to get you somewhere personally i don't see a huge use for it but i'm sure there's certain situations where it'd work nicely so now let's go ahead and move on to the bridge pickup the neck pickup by itself and the bridge pickup by itself. Here's where things get super crazy is you can have them both on at the same time, have any combination of single or humbucker in any position and yeah, it's just gonna get kind of a mess here. But let's see what I can dial in. Here's both in single. in humbucker mode. Now we've got both in humbucker. the neck and single and bridge and humbucker. Now remember, you can do all the in-betweens with all those as well. So something like this. That gives you some sort of idea of what this thing can sound like. Now we'll go into the controls. I noticed the volume cuts out really quickly. There it is at about seven. It sounds like it's off. Go ahead and throw some distortion on it, just regular positions. So the kill switch up here, a little bit redundant, unless you want to do stutter effects with the middle position, but they probably just needed to put something in here to fill up the space. Humbucker neck. Sounds 
single coil neck. <laughs> Somewhere in between. Bridge humbucker. Vintera Modified Jaguar. What are my final thoughts on this thing? Going into this review, I thought my final opinion was going to be something along the lines of, it's a nice guitar, but it's outrageously overpriced for what it is. But now that I've actually, you know, put it through its paces, I am pleasantly surprised by just how versatile this guitar is. If you like something that can, you know, do just about everything, this is a guitar for you. It's kind of got a quirky jag sting like look to it with the humbuckers and things like that. But I had a great time with this one. I was not expecting to. Though listening back to the recordings wasn't as impressed as I was in person. So maybe that just comes down to bad amp settings. Remember in that unboxing episode, I said I got tricked into buying this because somebody wanted me to purchase this to trade them for a different guitar that they had. Don't worry, that guy's not dead. It took him a few more days, but he did get back with me. But I'm still not sure if that trade's working out or not. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I will be listing this one on Reverb if you are interested in this scratch and dent model. But hey, besides it being a discount for a scratch and dent, remember, beautiful bird's eye on the neck and an awesome fretboard. So I think if you've been looking for one of these things, this is going to be a nice deal at 900 bucks. So just in case you are interested in this, we'll go ahead and go over its condition again. Pretty much it's just a few light picking scratches and things like that. Nothing too crazy over the top. I only played it maybe an hour or so. Now I do want to say there is a little bit of fret sprout, but I think that's kind of to be expected on a Fender style guitar. It's not crazy by any means, but you can slightly feel it when you rub your finger along there. So keep that in mind. And you're going to have fingerprints on these shiny metal bits right here. That's just unavoidable. As well as something I don't really like about this guitar. I wish there would be like a protective coating over top of those. That's just always there. It can just always be super shiny instead of fingerprinted up. But it is all original because, well, it's a brand new guitar. <laughs> Moving on to the back side of our headstock here. I did not ding this up against anything. Remember, the ding that's on the body, I did not cause that, 100%. My best guess is it came from the factory that way because it took me, what, a good two weeks to even notice that it was there. Can you guys spot where it is just by going over here real quick? It hides itself pretty good, doesn't it? But nope. But there it is, it got dinged up against something. But luckily the finish it didn't chip off or anything. That'd be a no-no for me. But since it just kind of hides itself like that, it's not a huge deal, but it is a deal that needs to be compensated for. Let's go ahead and look under blacklight. Under blacklight, this thing's actually a little bit interesting. So you're gonna notice along the edges, it actually glows slightly different than the rest of the guitar. Not quite sure why. I'll let you guys conspire about that within the comment section. But there must just be a slightly different paint that they use. And you'll notice on the front side of the body, there's a little bit of irregularity with the glowing right by the tremolo system. Not quite sure what this is all about. It's not like dings or nicks in the finish. This is completely invisible under regular lighting situations. For a frame of reference, here's where that actual ding is and it doesn't glow any differently. But moving on to the neck, you've got a satin finish back here, but it still glows and the face of the headstock does as well. So kind of a cool, slightly mysterious guitar under black light. And if you order one of these things brand new, I know, unfortunately, a gig bag. I think anything over a thousand dollars should instantly come with a hard shell case, but that's just me. It, these things are actually made in China, if you read the label. So your bags are made in China, the guitar's made in Mexico. 
they call this a deluxe gig bag. I mean, it's got some padding. It's nothing to sneeze at. It's better than a dust cover. But one really cool feature here is this. <laughs> one of the little zippers here is actually a Fender medium pick. Very nice touch. But as far as the zippers themselves, they feel kind of weak, like they would break eventually. Like they're not gonna break right away, but they're not gonna last forever either. But inside here, you do have your whammy bar, you've got some backpack straps, and you have a little bit of fender paperwork. Nothing too much, though. If you think it might be interested in being the next owner of this Fender 60s Ventera Jaguar, you can check out the link in the description, which will take you to the Reverb for Sale page. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.